From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here on a Monday. I hope you had a good weekend, and I hope you're enjoying this fantastic weather, and Leland says it's going to be even nicer today. So maybe get out and about and enjoy that, but you're joining me this morning for the big show. We've got a couple topics. Uh, the main topic of uh, conversation this morning is going to be, of course, we know the uh, pandemic relief pro package is about to pass in the House and the Senate and be signed by the President probably later this week. So there could be some stimulus relief money coming your way before the end of the month. Now, that's part of the package. Another part of the package is right now through many of these hard times, we know so many folks have been on a tight budget and as a result, it's been an issue whether or not they can make their rent, their mortgage, uh, you know, what happens with landlords, evictions and all of that. Well, we're going to talk this morning about a program here in Davidson County um, and, and possibly with regards to maybe some of the similar programs happening outside the county, but in Davidson County, some $20.8 million set aside to help with residents catching up with a uh, past due rent and utility payments. That kind of money's out there for you if you're facing something like this. So you'll want to join in the conversation this morning. We can take your calls and questions, but we have a great guest in a moment. Later in the show, at the very end of the program, we're going to talk about um, the fact that uh, the George Floyd trial is scheduled to begin with jury selection this morning up in Minnesota. Of course, we have the Daniel Hambrick case that's happening here in Tennessee and is going to trial early this summer and we're going to make some comparisons and talk about this especially in light of the fact that this past week the city settled uh, for more than a couple of million dollars with the Hambrick family for what happened and what all that means so we'll go through some of that that's later in the show but the first part rent relief and it's not something that can help you you may know someone who does need this kind of help and to talk about that metro action is involved with this big time with the city and uh, lisa mccrady is joining us this morning and it's always a pleasure to have her on and uh listen you guys are always in the middle of this type of thing this is a lot of money set aside you think uh this can help how many people here in davidson county is there a number of how many people could benefit from this lisa yeah, we've, we've estimated that well over 5,000 uh, residents here in Davidson County uh, would um, uh, be able to receive this relief uh, uh, funding. Um, and so uh, we're so excited. I guess that's why I'm kind of stuttering because I have so many thoughts going through my head <laughs> about what this will mean for our county. And so we're very appreciative of this additional funding. Uh, very appreciative to our mayor, uh, Mayor Cooper, for applying for this funding through Treasury. Um, this is $20.8 million coming into Davidson County. And so uh, we're very excited about what this will mean for many families and individuals here in our county. That, that's just fantastic. And we're, we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of this. Phase one already underway, phase two, phase three. So what we're talking about are, are people out there that because of this pandemic over this past year, have fallen behind on rent and utility, correct? Is that, it's basically rent and utility. This correct. is not including mortgages, or is it? It is not including okay. mortgages. Okay. Um, so this, yes, this is specific to rent payments and utilities. And, and really the rationale behind uh, not including mortgages is that many mortgage companies have programs to where um, it's either a deferment or a forbearance program. And so, especially if they're federally back, uh, backed, so there are some additional programs there. Um, so yeah, that's that's why the the rent um, assistance is consistent with this this funding that we have. And that makes sense to me. As far as the the folks renting out there, I mean, I know some people may have fallen a month or two behind, but I mean, there there are reports out there of some folks who have fallen as much as twelve months behind in their rent, uh, either not able to pay the full amount or hardly any at all. But uh, because of a moratorium on evictions, um, you know, they've been able to stay in their homes. How does that work? So what happens is, um, well, let me just kind of go back a little bit. Um, back in the summertime, or really, no, not the summer, but the end of last year, we received some additional funding from MHA through, that was a pass-through from HUD. And so what that allowed us to do is to catch up um, renters and mortgage um, applicants for three to six months. And it, the three to six months depends on when the home or the dwelling was built. What we quickly discovered is that, that funding, number one, we ran out of it re very quickly, um, and that three to six months wasn't enough. And so um, when this opportunity 
to the city or to, to our county, we knew right away there would be many families that will fall within that category of being more than six months up to 12 months behind. And so this, app, this opportunity allows for either the renter or the landlord to initiate the application um, so that we can get this going. Um, once we go through the, the um, eligibility criteria and then all the supporting documents are in there, we're able to cut the check directly or direct deposit that funding right to the landlord. Oh, and you said something okay. very interesting, yeah. rent payments and, you know, it should be. Uh, but there are many landlords that are really having trouble, particularly those sure. who own that are they're renting out you know there's still mortgages on those and so when they not when they're not getting the rent um that also impacts their ability to even um hold on to the property right and that and i think it's important to keep that in mind we all think about well we certainly don't want to evict anyone during these hard times and have them no place to live if they can't pay but at the same time you realize a lot of these landlords have to pay you know mortgage payments on the properties they own and all of a sudden their incomes dried up so the idea of this is that you want to be able to help both of them by doing you know if they can pay their rent then the money gets to the landlord is that the way it works and what if the landlords Correct. have fallen behind to some degree then they can just transfer the money there toward the payments they've fallen behind well what happens is that, that the landlords themselves can start the application sure. and so it's the the really the beauty of this arrangement is that if it does start with the landlord everybody's already there and so we've already had several outreach meetings with the landlord and property owners here in Davidson County to show them or to let them know what is expected what are the, the uh, documents that they as a landlord would need to have um, and the uh, benefit to joining with their renter to complete this application there's a portal that we've created um, in partnership with our Metro ITS division um, that's brand new um, and is specific to this program. Uh, we also have a call center um, that opens up actually today um, that will help um, everyone who needs to have access to this program to understand how to navigate it. Our official launch is next Monday, March 15th. Mm -hmm. And so I want everyone to be ready uh, we've talked to, um, even on the legal side, we've, we've spent a lot of time with Judge Bell and her team uh, because the, the, the folks that we, we believe are on like the cusp of it are the ones who are, ra once the moratorium opens, um, it's about 1,800 um, cases already backlogged. And so wow. their wait what occurred. Uh, some of them already have. And so what happens is we work in tandem with the courts. Um, we're the money side. And so she has a team that's working on the mediation side just to make sure everything uh, works out well and that we know exactly what the person owes. There are other organizations that are working. So say for instance, for, for some reason they may not qualify for our program. Uh, there are other partners that are uh, connected um, with this initiative to make sure we're able to give that help. That's great. And, you know, it's interesting when you think about it. I mean, there's all different kinds of rents, but in general in Davidson County, you know as well as I do, rent is not cheap here, okay? I mean, it is it's expensive. Not. I mean, to find even, you know, smaller apartments, it's quite a bit of money. And we talk about this stimulus that's about to pass. Well, yeah, you know, okay, $1,400 that some may get, however amount that is. You know as well as I do, if you get that stimulus payment for some, if that's going toward rent, that's gone in one month. Gone. It, it absolutely could be. That's only going to get you so far, so that's why this additionally is great. Listen, we have a phone call or two I want to squeeze in here, and certainly as we make our way through the remaining portions of this show, I want to go into some of the specifics, including some of the different breakdowns on household income and what qualifies and like. But let's, let's take a quick call from Joe. Joe, good morning. Hi, okay. Joe. Hi, Joe. Are you there, Joe? Yes. Hey, go ahead, Joe. What's on your mind? Well, one thing that's on my mind is we had a tremendous uh, tax increase on homeowners. Mm -hmm. And uh, these builders are coming in here like flies, building these huge hotels and condos and uh, apartments everywhere. They're they going to be doing okay when this all works out. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, I mean, I, I, I feel for the people that, that the 
pandemic has, has uh, affected their income, but they've uh, they've muffed this uh, shot, COVID shot. I mean, they're dropping back down to 16 years old, and there's people like me that's it's, uh, 80 years old that still haven't got their shots. So, yeah. uh, our pride is all messed up everywhere and every which way you can think. Well, I can tell you this, Joe, now that they've gone to 1C, you would have qualified anyway. More vaccine are coming, and that's a little off point with our guest this morning. But, yeah, get online today or make your calls. You should be able to get an appointment, Joe, to get your vaccine without a doubt today. The question is, can you get there and all the like? But I hope you do, Joe. You need to do that. As far as what he talks about, that was just kind of piggybacking on what I said with developers and the growth. And so many more people now are renting instead of buying, it seems like, maybe because they have no choice or they can't afford the high price of property here. But that's one reason when you said how many people this might help some 5,000 people right off the top of your head, you're saying right now could qualify for this kind of rent help, correct? That is correct. And I also would like to step back. He, he made a very good point on the property tax increases. And so we do have a property tax program. Right. Um, that's for years. Um, we also work with the assessor's office on the freeze program and some other things that once we all the resources are together, we're uh, able to make a, a significant impact on the amount of property tax owed. Um, I, I think um, to Joe's point, you know, there are a lot of people um, that are in various situations and all of it seems to be tying back to COVID and some of the other things that, that was exacerbated by COVID. Um, and then not to mention, we just came off of a tornado. Sure. Um, we're actually coming tornado the next week pandemic starts to rear it's it's ugly head um and then you know we we've we've davidson county has had kind of a, a significant impact and then we bombing and on christmas and so we've had a lot of things to happen to us um on top of a, a city budget that's that was fragile um and so you know having to make those adjustments um everywhere um it, it, it i think everybody is feeling the impact i couldn't agree with you more boy what a year listen let's take a break when we come back we've got ann and some other phone calls questions and then i want to start breaking it down for folks they're wondering maybe okay i think i may be in this position how do i qualify let's get into some of the nuts and bolts with our fine guest right after this stay with us